hello there. Uh, in this video, I'm going to give an explanation of prototypal inheritance in JavaScript. Um, let's get into it. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to sort of explain the relationship between class-based inheritance and prototypal inheritance. And the relationship is basically that the class-based syntax is simply syntactic sugar for the, the prototypal version of the code. Okay, let's say you write some code in the class style. Uh, when we say the class style is merely syntax sugar, what do people really mean? That means that style of code simply gets translated by your JavaScript engine that's executing the code into the prototypal style. So, and, and so this version is gonna look somewhat different to this version, although there are certainly similarities. Um, and what, what that means is basically that when you're writing things in class style, in reality, things are still happening in the prototypal style. And I'll give you sort of the both versions for comparison, but really that's what it means. Let me make an example file. So let's say uh, we're gonna be dealing with superheroes. Uh, I'm gonna make a class called superhero. Uh, I'm gonna write in the class style first, assuming that you're more accustomed to the class style, maybe. If that's not the case, that's okay too. But uh, if I were to make a superhero class with uh, which the objects of that class contain a name, I would do it like this. And let's say this superhero is able to announce himself, maybe. Okay, so that, that's how a superhero might announce himself. And if we had a class like this, and we won't, we wanted to write code that makes use of this class. We might write something like this. Let's have Superman. Okay, so this creates an instance of superhero. Um, when, when I say class versus instance, so uh, class versus instance, uh, you can maybe you can think of the word class as like a a literal class in a school <laughs> uh, and then you got people in this class uh, so i guess all of these people or all of these it could doesn't have to be people either it could be things objects objects <laughs> oop objects uh, so these could be people or they could be objects they all belong to this class and the class is sort of this this uh, box or this classroom maybe <laughs> or, or or you can even look at it as a place where objects or children <laughs> or people originate and when these guys come out into the world by us calling new the name of the class we're really saying hey class can you make a new version or new instance of these little peoples and and sort of bring bring him or her out into the world and that's really what's happening when you say new superhero we're going into the superhero class or or, or factory is another way to think of it and we're making a new one of them and then here you go there you have your new superhero now and um yeah, so that's how you can think about uh, classes versus instances. An instance is, is, a, is an object or thing that came out of a class. And it belongs to that class, if you will. Uh, but once we have this instance of the, uh, the thing, or, or an instance of an object, instance of a superhero, then this instance of the superhero has all of the abilities that the 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 things of the superhero class has which includes a name and the ability to announce themselves so i'll have superman announce himself announce 
and uh, we can uh, we can okay so we use node.js to execute this example oh super name is undefined oops super name I, I certainly meant superman there we go so so superman is able to say greetings i am superman uh, so this is the class version of the code right and as we said a class style code in javascript as it stands is simply syntactic sugar for the prototypal inheritance style of doing the same thing so what does the prototypal style for writing this code look like uh let let's see so in the prototypal style uh, I'm, I'm gonna actually gonna comment this out so this is class style I'm gonna, gonna comment this out code and redo it in the prototypal style. The prototypal style looks like this. We're gonna have a function whose name matches the name of the class, which previously existed but is no more. Um, and within this function, we're gonna have the exact same code as the constructor that previously existed uh, and you can really just think of this function as the constructor itself um, and then in order to add the ability for people in the superhero class to announce themselves we're gonna do this and that is the prototypal style of writing that class uh, let me test it just to make sure I did this right and I didn't make a mistake. Yeah, so we get the exact same behavior using this version of the code uh, instead of using this version of the code. Um, let's explain what's actually going on in here with the prototypal style. Uh, what do these mean? I, I think one thing that really confuses people is this superhero that prototype that announce what what are you really doing when you're doing that like what what is prototype <laughs> what what is why, why does this function have a prototype uh, and what is it okay first of all uh, I, I would like to give a little bit of history so when mr. Brandon Ike created JavaScript Brandon I hope I don't misspell his name I think it's with an E here and an A here uh, Brandon Ike I, I hope I got that right um, he created JavaScript, his boss, uh, and he did this for Netscape, by the way. His boss at Netscape told him, uh, you can do whatever you want, just make it look like Java because we're trying to co-brand this with Sun Microsystems Java programming language. And, and it, it, that's, incidentally, that's also why JavaScript got the name JavaScript. Uh, but Brandon really likes Lisp, which is heavily function-based, and he doesn't care for Java so much. Uh, so in effect, he is having to sort of retrofit his functional programming style language into looking like a object-oriented programming language like Java. So sort of like in essence, JavaScript is not really about objects, but he's sort of like retrofitting it into working with objects. And so he didn't want to have classes. So he said, you know what, I'll just sort of repurpose functions to, to make them work like classes. And so what he basically did is whenever you make a function, um, any function really, so let's say you have a function called superhero. What JavaScript is gonna do is sort of make this function object. Uh, so JavaScript knows that there's a function object called superhero, but then associated with the function object, there will be a prototype object, which will be just a normal JavaScript object, which will initially just be the empty object. Like, like this, the, the, this, the object literal notation. And that object is so, sort of conceptually 
it's like the prototypical version of whatever your class you're trying to represent. So this would be the prototypical superhero. So whatever this prototypical superhero has, all of your superheroes coming out of the class of superhero will also have. So then, in order to add abilities to everybody, all the instances of superheroes that came out of that class, this is what you do. You say, hey, the prototypical superhero, superhero.prototype. So when you do superhero.prototype, you're really talking about that guy. So superhero.prototype, I would like to add a new property called announce on you. And, and I want that to be this function. So you're saying, hey, you want to open up this object and add an announce function into here. So I want you to no longer be a empty object, but instead be an object that has announce on it, which is a function, etc. And then, so, so now the prototypical superhero is going to have an announce. And then due to this happening, anytime you make a new version of the superhero by calling this function, um, by the way, when you call new, so, so there's two ways, well, multiple ways of calling a function in JavaScript. One way is just to call it like this, right? Call superhero, but another way is call it with new. And when you call it with a new, then a new object is sort of magically created. It's, it's that creating a new student out of the class and, and sending him or her out into the world. When that process happens, the new instance of the object will magically inherit all of the things that the prototypical version of him has. So the Superman will be able to announce because Superman has the announce method because it inherits that from the prototypical version of superhero. Um, so that's how that works. Um, I hope that makes things a little bit more clear. Uh, oh, I also want to mention, so if you go to websites like MDN, and read about arrays, for example. It'll, it'll document all of these methods that array has and prefix it with array.prototype, right? Array.prototype.every, array.prototype.concat, array.prototype.entries. There's also things that are not on the prototype, like array.from. And the ones that are on the array prototype are basically the methods that all instances of arrays, because arrays are instances too. Array, there's an there's a array class, if you will, from which all instances of arrays come from. And all instances of arrays will have the things that the array prototype has. You can think of the array prototype also like as a template for all the instances of the array, uh, and which is what allows us to, if you have an array, one, two, three, array can have a dot map method because, well, map is on the array prototype. You know, it can also do flat, apparently. Not that familiar with flat, but anything that's on the array prototype, your array instance, um, and there is a bit the this when you write an array literal syntax here, there's a little bit of magic that JavaScript puts in to to make this be an array instance, which then inherits from the array prototype. And so you can just imagine there's there's some developer who has set up the array for you in this manner. Uh, I don't know. 
with, with the values maybe coming in and then th there's a person I misspelled array here. There's a person that's just painstakingly defining these array functions, like array that map is has to work this way, array that filter has to work another way, etc. Um, so yeah, so so when you're reading the documentation, that's what that weirdness means. And uh, I hope this was a little bit helpful to you. Thank you for watching.